So what are some of the different factors that you look at when analyzing uh, risk? Because I, I know like sometimes people look at the reward, they look at, wow, 9%, 10% of my money. But what do you, what do you look at uh, as it relates to risk? And maybe what are some of the things that, uh, uh, that you didn't look at at the beginning as it relates to risk that now you actually, with more experience that you maybe learned um, and look at now? Yeah, risk is maybe the hardest thing to analyze because you, it's very difficult to quantify and actually put in numbers, right? You can put the spreadsheet together and say, oh, well, 8% of my money or you know, 15% IRR, but nowhere in there does it really tell you risk. So, yeah. so risk you have to deliberately analyze through other means, which can be you know, stress testing or scenario testing and things like that. So for, for us, or you know, in my opinion, just generally speaking, there's four sources of risk in deals. Right. You've got, and in my opinion, the largest one is debt, mm -hmm. right? Debt. You, if you put too much debt on a great deal, it'll become a bad deal if something wrong happens. That's true. So, so debt is the largest source of risk, especially when you're talking about a bridge loan, because bridge loans are, are higher leverage and mm -hmm. shorter maturity, right? And maturity risk is the most important um, financing risk, because if your loan matures and you're not in a, in a good position to refinance it or to sell the asset, and pay off that loan, you know, you might have to do a capital call or lose money or, or bad stuff. So you don't want to have, so that's another risk to be uh, appreciative of. So debt is, is the most important risk in my opinion. Then the other three risks are asset market and business plan. With the asset, you have risks like to the infrastructure, right? Plumbing goes bad, roof goes bad, foundations, right? That, that's just infrastructure risk at the asset. Um, which, you know, you need a diligence, you need a budget for that, that, you know, you can kind of take care of that mostly. Yeah. And then market risk also, you know, you can understand well and, uh, you know, buy where there's population growth, right. And buy mm -hmm. where there's job growth and lower crime and higher incomes, you know, all those things you want to, you know, find with the metrics that look work for you as far as the market. Right. So that is, easier said than done. I mean, it's pretty simple, you know, buying a good market. But at the same time, when you look at a deal that's maybe not in a great market, but the numbers look good, you think, wow, maybe, maybe I should go on this one, and take the risk. Um, so, so that's always a, an art as well. And then lastly, the business plan, right? If I told you I'm doing a deal where I'm going to take the rents from $1,000 and move them to $2,000, you'd have to understand that that business plan is a whole lot riskier than buying the deal with $1,000 rents and just letting it cash flow. Right. Uh, so that's another way we spend a lot. I mean, we quantify risk a lot through the business plan and specifically how much we're increasing revenue. If we are projecting to increase revenue by 20%, let's say, you know, we don't think that's a crazy big risk, but we appreciate that that is, you know, we call that execution risk, right? There's risk to getting the business plan to where it needs to be. And if we fall short, the return is not going to be there. On the other hand, if our business plan is just to push revenue a couple percent, if we don't hit it, it's no big deal. Yeah. So that's another risk we look at. 